That makes more sense. Can we try again then? Okay, check one, two, check one, two. Ranger baseball check. Check, check one, two, check one, two. Feedback check. Check one, two. That's good. Okay. Anything? Okay. And then I need to make sure I can, if I turn the volume off, I'm okay too. Mic on. I've got the mic on right now, turning the mic on. Do you have a highlighter?
Good afternoon and welcome to Ranger Baseball. This is Fred Abishan on the Ranger Sports Network filling in for Dustin Goodnow. It is an overcast afternoon here in Elva as the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers are going to be hosting non-conference opponent out of the MIAA Northeastern State. And the Riverhawks come in with an overall record of 28 and 13, 17 and 10 in MIAA play. Northwestern Sports an 18 and 24 record themselves, and they have a conference record of 11 and 16. I'll give you the starting lineup here for the Riverhawks. Batting off and playing left field, number four, Blake Hoffman. Batting second, number three, the second baseman, Blaze Brothers. Batting third, number 20, right fielder, Brock Reller. Batting cleanup, number 16, first baseman, C.D. White. Batting fifth, number five, the catcher, Braden Rodden. Batting sixth, number nine, center fielder, Matt Kaiser. Batting seventh, number 25, the designated hitter, Tucker Dunlop. Batting eighth, number 27, third baseman, Colin Klingensmith. And batting ninth, number one, the shortstop, Cademan Graff. Pitching for the Rangers, number 45, Matthew Potts. Potts making his sixth start on the season. He has a 2-1 record and has a 6.03 ERA. The left-handed pitcher will be facing off the lefty, Blake Freeman, and the first pitch in there for strike one. Matthew Potts making his 11th overall appearance on the season. He's out of Pasadena, Texas. And now with the 0-1 count, here's the pitch. That's in the zone but low. Ball one. Count will go to one and one here. Top of the first inning here in Elva, Oklahoma. We're in Glass Family Field in Meyer Stadium. 65 degrees. Very overcast afternoon. A little bit of light drizzle coming in and winds out of the south at about 22 miles an hour as we see a big cut and miss there by the lefty Freeman. Freeman, a junior out of Wichita, Kansas. Played high school ball at Bishop Carroll. And now with the one and two count, here's the pitch. As a breaking ball, it's going to miss high. Count will now go to two and two. And here's the two and two pitch. This one's hit into center field. Should drop in for a single, and it does. Coming in is Kelly. He'll make the play and throw the ball into the cutoff, man. And that'll be a leadoff single here for the Riverhawks. And Blake Freeman, the number one overall hitter for the Riverhawks, picks up his 71st hit on the season. And that'll bring to the plate the right-handed hitting second baseman, number three, Blaze Brothers. Brothers comes in hitting 295 on Springdale, Arkansas. And the good breaking ball in there, swinging and miss, there's strike one. The Riverhawks come in with their black tops and gray pants, wearing their black hats with white trim today. And they already have somebody warming up in the bullpen, so it's possible, well, it's actually probably just their starter. <laughs> their starter is continuing to warm up in the bullpen. Here's the pitch. That pitch in the zone and over. That'll be strike two, count goes to 0 and two. Kind of caught me off guard. I didn't see him out there warming up when the game was about to start, but their starting pitcher is warming up now. So count 0-2. Here's the pitch. That's going to be low. Good stop. It's in the dirt. Priest scoops it up and gets it back out there again. Defensively here for the Rangers in left field, Joseph Frisbee. Out in center is Sean Kelly. Over in right, Braden Koenig. And with one and two count, they had him picked off. Nice move there by the pitcher, Potts. He throws to Hoffman, and then he throws to Guerrero, and he tags him out right in front of second base. So a pickoff move, that move after the leadoff single. That's out number one here for the Riverhawks. So that'll go down as a one to three to six for the putout. And with one down, the count one and two now, there's nobody on.
Hope you're not getting a lot of this feedback. I'm getting a little feedback in my headset here, but hopefully you're not hearing that at home. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball popped up. Deep into left field, going back as Frisbee. Calling him off is Sean Kelly. He'll make the play in left center, and that'll be out number two. Wind is carrying. I said it's about 22 miles an hour, blowing straight out to center right now, so that did carry a little more, but fielded nicely there by Sean Kelly. So Sean Kelly out in center, Joseph Frisbee over and left. We already said that. Braden Koenig over and right. Third base, Brandon Holdren. Playing shortstop today, Brian Guerrero. Over at second, Hugo Hamakawa. Blake Hoffman over at first as we see the first pitch here. Tareller is ball one. Hayden Priest behind the plate. And, of course, your pitcher, Matthew Potts. So the number three hitter, Rock Reller at the plate now with two down. Reller a lefty. Here's the pitch. That one hits him. So for Matthew Potts, that'll be his eighth batter hit this season. And so Reller standing on first base. Now that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, first baseman, number 16, C.D. White. C.D. White, a 6'3 sophomore out of Owasso, Oklahoma. Working from the stretch, here's the pitch. This ball just outside gets him for strike one swinging. On deck is Braden Rodden the catcher for the Riverhawks. Two down, one on count, 0-1 oh here, still top of the first inning. And here's the pitch. That ball is high and for a ball, ball one. Reller standing at pretty close to first base, especially after the good pickoff move displayed by Matthew Potts. Here's the pitch. That one's low and outside, gonna have to be stopped again in the dirt by Priest. Priest making his second save so far here in the first inning. Count two and one now. Pot sets, he deals. That ball is just a little high for ball three. White comes in hitting 360 on the season. He's second on the team in batting average. Also has nine home runs and 43 RBI, so dangerous. Solid team, these River Hawks. And here's the three and one pitch. This ball is hit high and deep into right field. Going back as Koenig. He's right in front of the warning track and will make the play, and that'll be all. So a couple of little minor threats here by the River Hawks, and we'll head to the bottom of the first with the score still 0-0. We'll be right back on the Rangers Sports Network. Scoreless, 
The Riverhawks put a runner on with a base hit to uh, lead off the inning and end up he getting picked off and then a hit batter, he gets stranded. So now we head to the bottom of the first, first Northwestern coming to the plate. Leading off for Northwestern, number one, the DH in the leadoff spot, Brett Erickson. And he'll be facing off against the starting right-handed pitcher for the Riverhawks, Cordell Giles. And the first pitch is hit in a short center field. Could be trouble. Nope, coming in is Kaiser, and he'll make the play. That ball just hung up just enough, and that'll be out number one. Coming to the plate now is going to be the number two hitter, second baseman, number six, Hugo Hamakawa. Hamakawa having a great season here for the Rangers. He leads the team in batting average, hitting 374. Also has 11 doubles and six home runs. And the first pitch from Giles, fastball outside for ball one. So Giles comes in. This is his fourth start on the season. And he's making his 11th overall appearance. Has a three point our three and one record with a 7.54 ERA on this season. He has 19 strikeouts to go with 17 walks as we go at ball two to Hamakawa. Hamakawa out of Tokyo, Japan. And so look at ball three. The ball skips away from the catcher, Rodden. And again, count now three and oh here on Hamakawa. So one down, bottom of the first inning, and this pitch is low and in the dirt, and that'll be ball four. So on the season, that's the 18th walk for Giles. And with one down, the Rangers have a man on first. Coming to the plate now, third baseman, Brandon Holdren. Holdren comes in hitting 338 on the season, leads the team with 16 doubles. He's a lefty sophomore out of Baytown, Texas. Giles, the righty, works from the first base side of the rubber, working from the stretch position. Here's a pitch. This ball is hit towards second base. Picked up by Brothers, throws over to Groff for one. Relay to first, double play. And just like that, the Ranger. in today for Dustin Goodnow. No score top of the second inning. We're here in a non-conference matchup with Northeastern State out of the MIAA facing off against your hometown Rangers. Coming to the plate now is the right-handed hitting catcher, Braden Rodden. On the mound still for Northwestern is Matthew Potts. And the first pitch to Rodden is going to be just low and outside. Oh, it catches for strike one. Thought that might have missed. Framed nicely there by Hayden Priest. So count now 0-1 on Rodden. Here's the pitch. 
This ball's hit right back to the mound, scooped up nicely by Potts. He'll underhand throw it over to Hoffman for out number one. So with one down now here in the top of the second, coming to the plate is the center fielder, number nine, Matt Kaiser. Kaiser, a lefty sports number nine on his back, a six foot three lefty sophomore on a broken arrow, Oklahoma. He'll look at a curveball in there for strike one. Kaiser's hitting 308 on the season and has a pretty impressive 16 stolen bases out of 18 attempts. 0-1 the count. Here's the pitch. This one's going to be just a little high and outside for ball number one. Stolen bases is a thing that these Riverhawks do well. To give you an idea, the Rangers have given or have had 27 stolen bases. They've given up 43. As we see a big swing and a miss for strike one. So 27 stolen bags for the Rangers. The Riverhawks have 104 stolen bases. They also have 82 home runs as a team. Here's the pitch. Just misses for ball two. Pretty solid team overall. The Riverhawks come in at 28 and 13 with a road wet record of 13 and 7. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball just misses inside. And the count will go full. Standing on deck is the designated hitter, Tucker Dunlap. So, lefty lefty matchup here with one down. Top of the second, nobody on. And the payoff pitch. In there, oh, up the middle for a base hit. Diving attempt by Hamakawa, but he won't be able to get to it. He's going to try for a second. Big stop. And he tried to show his wheels there. Again, one of the stolen base leaders here for the Riverhawks. Second hit of the game for Northeastern. That will bring up Dunlap. Tucker Dunlap, a right-handed hitting designated hitter out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. So hit both Kaiser and Dunlap coming to Northeastern from Broken Arrow. Dunlap hitting 278 on the season. He has five home runs and 25 RBIs. And this pitch will just miss for ball one. It's free ice cream day here at Myers Stadium, so if you're listening in nearby, pop on in to get some free ice cream. It should go well with that beautiful afternoon. Another pickoff play. He got him at first. Got him leaning, and that's a second pickoff already for the starting pitcher, Matthew Potts. So, again, if you're out, if you're nearby and listening in, stop on by the stadium here and pick up some free ice cream. It's compliments of Scoops. Scoops is delivering some free ice cream today to Myers Stadium. So now two down here in the top of the second. Tucker Dunlap with a 1-0 pitch count. And he hits one up the middle for another base hit. There's a third single of the game for Northeastern. You know, you don't see pickoff plays too often. And we've already seen two here in two innings by the Rangers. And that'll bring up the left-handed hitting third baseman, number 27, Colin Klingensmith. Klingensmith, a 331 hitter, tied for the team lead in doubles with 15. Tied for a third of the team with 16 stolen bases. And another pickoff attempt, he got him leaning as well. So this pickoff move by Potts is confusing the base runners for Northeastern. I've got to be thinking that Coach Bowen and Coach McGinty were, or Coach Ginty, not McGinty, excuse me, Coach Ginty were probably working on pickoff plays knowing that this team steals a lot. This ball gets away from the catcher. It bounced in front of him. And that'll go down as a pass ball on Matt Kaiser. So now a man on second with two down. And Klingensmith 
with a 1-0 and count. Klingon Smith out of Duncan, Oklahoma. He's a 6'1 lefty senior. And the pitch over but low for ball two. On deck right now, the number nine hitter, Cademan Groff. And here's the pitch by Potts. Big cut and a miss there for strike one. And it definitely looked like Klingon Smith was looking deep into right on that swing as he pulled his head all the way around on his follow through. Count goes to two and one. Two down here in the top of the second. Man on second. And here's the pitch. Good looking fastball, but but misses, ball three. Potts takes a long look over at second base. He works from mostly the first base side of the rubber in the stretch position. He's got a little gap there between his left foot and the edge of the rubber. Here's the pitch. This ball is swung on, hit high and deep to right field, but way foul. He had a really good cut at that one and made solid contact, but a little bit off the handle and pulled that one. Again, 65, very windy. Winds about 22 miles an hour out of the south, pushing out to center field. Very overcast. Probably going to get the lights on here real soon. Full count. Here's the pitch. This ball is swung out and fouled straight back. And Klingon Smith staying alive here on the full count. So far, Northeastern has had three singles. And they've had a batter hit by a pitch. Hasn't produced any runs yet so far here on the top of the second. But they're already putting some pressure on starting pitcher Matthew Potts. Big curveball misses high and away for ball four. And there's the first walk. Walk number 13 on the season for Potts. Potts also has 23 strikeouts this year to go with his 6.03 ERA. So men in first and second now, Cabin Groff coming to the plate. Groff, a right-handed hitter, hitting 287 on the season. Lefty-righty matchup here against the number nine hitter. Hot sets, he deals. Check swing in there for strike one. Nice comeback pitch by Matthew Potts. And that's something you have to do in this situation is forget about that walk. If you can control the number nine hitter, that walk does not hurt you one bit. Regardless, top of the second inning, there are two runners on with two out. And here's the pitch, swung on and missed strike two. Umpire said he got a piece of it, hung on nicely there by Hayden Priest. So now the count's 0-2. Potts trying to get out of this little bit of a jam here with two runners on in the top of the second. No score here is still in Elva. Potts is set. He deals. Here's the pitch. Going to miss high and outside for ball one. Few, few fans now coming into the ballpark and embracing the Overcast day to day, light light drizzle out there at times, not bad. They want to come support their Rangers and maybe even get that free ice cream today. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be fought off and fouled. Hit it off the end of the bat towards the first base dugout. Once again, the Rangers playing a non-conference game today here in Elva, hosting the Northeastern State Riverhawks. Riverhawks led by Coach Jake Hendrick. Your Rangers led by Coach Ryan Bowen. And the pitch from Potts. This one's crushed into left field. That's going to be trouble. It's going to get in the gap. It goes up against the wall. Coming across is Dunlap. Right behind him is going to be Klingon Smith. He'll score as well. That's going to be a two RBI double for Cademan Groff. 
and Northeastern has taken the lead 2-0 here in the top of the second inning. So once again, Tucker Dunlap and Colin Klingensmith come across the plate to score on the double by Caden Groff, and we head to the top of the lineup now. And Blake Freeman, who singled up the middle but got picked off by Matthew Potts, now coming to the plate. Freeman, a 429 hitter on the season. He'll look at a breaking ball for strike one. Potts getting ahead on the count here. 0 and 1 the count with two down, a man on second. Two runs across already here in the inning. Here's the pitch. Another breaking ball slapped into center for a base hit. They're going to probably send him. Going to have a play at the plate, not cut off, and just getting under the tag or under the glove. And it it looks like we had an interference called on the catcher, so the run does score. It would have scored anyway as the ball did scoot away, and that's going to bring out Coach Bowen to talk to his team. So we'll take a break for a few moments here. We'll be right back on the Ranger Sports Network. And we are back here once again, still here in the top of the second inning. Northeastern has picked up three runs. They've had two singles, a walk, a double, and now another single to produce those runs. And coming up now is Blaze Brothers. He flew out to left field his first time up. And here's the pitch. This ball's fouled off aggressively into the dugout of the Rangers. On the scoreboard right now, Northeastern three runs on five hits, no errors. And Northwestern still looking for their first hit of the game as they've only been up one time as we're still here in the second inning. Normal nine inning game here today. And with the count 0-1, here's the pitch to Brothers. That ball over and in for strike two. So Potts working ahead on the count again, but he has been working ahead on the count, but then he's lost to some solid hitting here by Northeastern, and they are a good hitting team. They come in hitting three in hitting, I'm sorry, they came in hitting 324 on the season. Here's the pitch, breaking ball in there for strike three, but fouled off, and that one bounced off the turf. So staying alive there is Brothers. Brothers from Springdale, Arkansas, comes in hitting 295. He is second on the team with 20 stolen bases and 23 attempts. This ball just outside misses. Count will now go to one and two. And quite a few fans now pulling up and getting some of that delicious Scoops ice cream before they come and have a seat here in the bleachers. Here's the pitch. Just misses outside for ball two. So Matthew Potts working into his 33rd inning this season overall. He's given up 21 earned runs, now officially 24 earned runs. This pitch has popped up right side, going back as Hoffman, coming over Hamakawa, and then he's going to lose it. That ball bounces in, and they'll be able to pick off the runner after the run does score. And he is out trying to get back to first base. Nice tag by Guerrero. So losing the ball in the extreme.
first baseman, number 12, Blake Hoffman. Official ruling on the previous play, what, it does go down as a single due to the wind. Well, so Blaze Brothers picks up a RBI single, but then he gets picked off on a 6-4 to four to end the inning. Cordell Giles still pitching here for Northeastern. His first pitch to Blake Hoffman is going to be outside for ball one. Hoffman, one of the best hitters in the GAC, a 2021 All-American. And he'll have a big cut there for strike one. He comes in hitting 343. He leads the team with 11 home runs and 45 RBIs. Also a slugging percentage of 608. Very impressive for the first baseman here. And he'll look at ball low. Count goes to two and one on Blake Hoffman. Hoffman stands at 6'3", a lefty out of the colony in Texas. And he'll see strike two taken all the way on that one. After a couple of inside pitches, Giles works and goes outside very effectively on that last pitch. On the season, Giles giving up 19 earned runs and he gets a strikeout there, and that is strikeout number 20 on the season for Giles as Hoffman goes down swinging. And that is the first strikeout for either team so far today. And coming to the plate now is going to be the center fielder, number 19, Sean Kelly. Kelly, the right-handed junior out of Arlington, Texas. Working from the first base side of the rubber, kind of a half stretch wind-up position is Giles, and he'll throw the first pitch in tight for ball one. So Cordell Giles is a six foot two right-handed sophomore. There's a base hit into deep left center. That could be trouble. Kelly rounding first. He's going for two. Picking up against the wall there is Freeman. He'll get it in. And there's going to be a double. The first hit of the game for the Rangers. For Kelly, that is going to be his 10th double on the season. So Cordell Giles, as I was saying, a 6'2 right-handed sophomore out of Sally Saw, Oklahoma. Started his college career at Seminole State. That's going to bring up number 15, the lefty Braden Koenig. One on and one down here in the bottom of the second. This pitch is way outside for ball one. Really good stop there by Braden Rodden. Koenig, a lefty sophomore out of Fargo, North Dakota. Played some previous ball at, in Bismarck State College. Working from the first base side of the rubber. Rubber here is Giles. This pitch is slapped into left field. It's going to be in the gap for a hit. They're going to hold up Kelly as he held just for a second to make sure it got through. And there's back-to-back -back hits for the Rangers. And responding well here is Northwestern as they have runners now on first and third. And that'll bring up the catcher, Hayden Priest. So for Koenig, that's going to be his 43rd hit of the season. Hayden Priest, a right-handed catcher, number 19. He's from nearby Enid, Oklahoma. And here's the first pitch, and that's going to be a good-looking pitch in there for strike one. That one was middle-middle pitch that I'm sure Priest would like to see one more time. Runners at the corners, one down here, bottom of the second. Northwestern does trail by four. And this one is middle, middle again. He hits this one deep into left field, going back as Freeman. He looks up and it's gone. He did. He got the pitch he wanted. I can't believe he threw the exact same pitch two in a row. And Priest was looking for it 
and crush that one into left center. That's a distance of about 390 feet. And he got all of that one, and now it's a one-run game. So Northwestern answers as we see the first home run of the game, and now it's a one-run game. And that's going to bring up the left fielder, number two, Joseph Frisbee. So again, on the play, Sean Kelly, Braden Koenig, both will score. Hayden Priest with a three-run homer to left center. And now number two, the lefty Joseph Frisbee at the plate. He hits this one high into deep center, going back as Kayser. And he'll make the play in center field. So a nice follow-up swing there by, by Frisbee. But Matt Kaiser out there in center field able to make the play. Now there are two outs. And that will bring up the left-handed hitting shortstop, Brian Guerrero. So Guerrero coming in, hitting 266 on the season. He's got 17 hits, four doubles, two home runs. Guerrero out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. The number nine hitter here for the Rangers. Comes up with two down here in the bottom of the second, and he'll look at strike one. Starting to see more and more fans coming out to the game. Most of them are in jackets, if not blankets. And there's a high pitch that misses for ball one. Guerrero has scored 19 runs to go with his 17 hits on the season. So he looks at strike two. That one looked a little high. Guerrero is questioning it. So count now one and two. And the pitch by Giles just misses down low for ball two. Count now two and two with two down here in the bottom of the second. On deck, the leadoff hitter, Brett Erickson. This pitch is low and inside once again. The count will go to full. Love to see Erickson come back to the plate this inning and put a little more pressure on the starting pitcher, Cordell Giles. With the count full, here's the pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three, and that'll be all. Northwestern gets a few back. We had to. And welcome back. This is Fred Albishon bringing you Ranger Baseball. We're in Meyer Stadium in Glass Family Field in Elva, Oklahoma, top of the third inning. And they're visiting Northeastern State Riverhawks on top, four to three. And coming to the plate now is going to be Brock Reller. Reller was hit by a pitch his first time up. And he looked at strike one on the first pitch here from starting pitcher Matthew Potts. 
and this one is down into the dirt for ball one. Reller comes in hitting 305 on the season. He also leads the team with 20 home runs and 59 RBIs. And this pitch is hit off the end of the bat and foul. Not that Matthew Potts hit him on purpose, but I can see why he wasn't giving him anything to swing at that first time up, the amount of power that he has. So now with one and two count, I can't imagine Reller is going to see anything very good to swing at here. Reller's out of Grand Forks, North Dakota, the left-handed hitting senior. Big curveball, swinging a miss, and for the, his first strikeout, Reller goes down, swinging. And for Potts, that's strikeout number 24 on the season. That'll bring up C.B. White. White flew out to right field his first time up. White hitting 360 on the season. He has 67 base hits. And he'll look at a curveball that just, that might have actually been a slurve. But that one broke and truly crossed the plate for ball one. Here's the pitch to White. That ball's way outside, first base side for ball two. White out of Owasu, Oklahoma. Played at Cowley County Community College in Kansas. And the 2-0 pitch. Couldn't reach that one. Swung and a miss. Strike one. So two and one the count. One down, nobody on here for Northeastern. Northeastern on top, four to three here in the top of the third inning. This ball's hit hard, but foul and out of play. And the count will move to two and two. Already nine combined hits here for the two teams, as well as seven combined runs through just two innings. And this ball is hit high and deep to center field. That's going to be trouble. Kelly looks up. Way gone. And that'll be a solo home run for C.D. White. That ball hit probably about 430 feet to straightaway center field. And the Riverhawks pick up their first home run and extend their lead to 5-3. to three. That was a no-doubt shot to straightaway center field. The wind is blowing that way, but I would not say that was wind-aided. So with one down and one across, that'll bring up Braden Rodden here in the top of the third. Rodden grounded out to the pitcher his first time up. And here's the pitch. Swung on a miss. He took something off that one. Potts has been outstanding when he's been hitting that outside part of the plate. It's when he misses and it crosses too much that he's having real trouble. He's moved the ball around well. His breaking ball looks good. It's just that some of his fastballs have seen too much of the center of the plate. Count now 0-1 here on Rodden. Here's the pitch. Same as location as last pitch, perfectly on the outside block. And that'll push the count to 0-2. On deck right now, Matt Kaiser. The center fielder is 1-for-1 one one on deck. Here's the 0-2 pitch. A little further outside that time for ball one. Very overcast afternoon here in this non-conference matchup here in Elva. That pitch bounces in. That'll move the count to two and two. Good a good change up attempt there, but he wasn't biting. Temperature holding steady at 65, winds at about 20 miles an hour, blowing straight out to center field. Here's the two and two pitch. And that's a good looking pitch there for strike three. Gets him swinging. Second strikeout of the game for Matthew Potts, number 25 on the season. 
That'll bring up the center fielder, Matt Kaiser. Kaiser singled in the second inning and then was picked off by Matthew Potts. And here's the pitch. Big curveball in there. Fouled off third base side. Could be playable. And that's going to be just out of the reach of Holdren at third base, getting into the Ranger bullpen. Have to wait for the Rangers to get back into defensive position. Guerrero playing almost behind second base, or a definite shift on here on the infield, outfield straight away. Kaiser with the 0-1 count. Here's the pitch. This ball's great breaking ball there for strike two swinging. Kaiser way out in front. With a nice 0-2 count here on Kaiser, you don't want to give him anything down the middle. Maybe something kind of high, maybe try to get him chasing. This is a breaking ball that bounces in there once again. Count goes to one and two. So you got his eye level is low, and now you have to take his eye level and change it and push something pretty high here. Just make sure you keep it outside. Another breaking ball just misses. Count goes to two and two. So three straight breaking balls. And I don't think you want to throw him another one if you, unless you want him to get ball three. And fastball swung on a miss, and he definitely changed the speeds up on him. Strike three. So three strikeouts in the inning. But those. And we are back here once again in Alva, Oklahoma. And the lights are on. It is definitely overcast. It's a little too dark, so lights are on here now, even though it's only 3.46 here Central Time. And the first pitch to leadoff hitter, Brett Erickson, low and outside for ball one. Erickson, back in the first inning, flew to center field. A good shot, just not deep enough. This ball is hit into center once again. And once again, it's going to be right at the center fielder, Matt Kaiser, for out number one. So Brett Erickson hitting solid shots. Unfortunately, they're straight to Kaiser in center. So with one down here in the bottom of the third, Hugo Hamakawa coming to the plate. Hugo walked his first time up and then was the, the beginning part of a double play to end the inning. Cordell Giles still pitching here for Northeastern. The first pitch to Hamakawa is low, but call for strike one. And here's the 0-1 pitch, going to be way outside for ball one. Five runs, seven hits, no errors for Northeastern. Three runs, three hits, no errors for Northwestern. 101 the count. Here's the pitch by Giles. Check swing. Did he go? Oh, I did not think he went. They called the appeal down to the third base umpire for strike two. And it looked like he held up, but the 
count now goes to one and two on the check swing. And the pitch by Giles. Swung on a miss, strike three. And Giles picks up his third strikeout of the game, giving him now 22 on the season. That'll bring up the third baseman, number nine, Brandon Holdren. Holdren grounded out to short, excuse me, second, his first time up. But that ground out was part of a double play to end the inning. Holdren hitting 338, swing and a miss for a strike one. Holdren out of Baytown, Texas, is a left handed hitting sophomore. And the pitch to Brandon, way outside for ball one. So two quick outs here on Northwestern in the bottom of the third as they trail by two. Holdren trying to keep them alive as a one and one count. No activity in either bullpen. And the pitch. He took that one just outside for ball two. Once again, we're in a non-conference matchup by MIAA Northeastern State and GAC hometown Northwestern Oklahoma State. Swing and a miss there by Holdren. The count will go to two and two. Ten total hits here in the game thus far. Two of those ten have been home runs. This ball's fouled off the leg of Holdren. He'll stay alive. So those two home runs have been pretty good shots here this afternoon. Down the left field line here, Meyer Stadium, it's 345. Straight ahead, straight away center is 390, and down the right field line is 325. And Holder will foul it off his foot once again. Brandon has a protective pad around the shin and ankle of his right foot. And I think he's hit it off that at least once, if not the last two times. Here's the pitch. Check swing, he did not go. The count will go to full on Holdren on deck right now. The first base, first baseman All-American, Blake Hoffman. We have free scoops ice cream here today at Meyer Stadium. Come on out and get your free ice cream today. There's a ball nubbed off the end of the bat down the first base line. That's going to trickle foul. So Holdren trying to stay alive here. Count will remain full. The pitcher, the pitcher Giles actually recovered that hit. And so we're just waiting for him to get back on the mound. And we're all set once again here. Full count, two down, bottom of the third inning. Nobody on. Brandon Holdren trying to stay alive here for the Rangers. This ball is swung on and miss. Strike three, hung on to nicely by the catcher, Rodden.
And we are back here once again in Alva, Oklahoma, top of the fourth inning, visiting Northeastern State Riverhawks on top, five to three. Lights are on here in Alva, even though it's just the mid-afternoon. On the mound still for Northwestern is Matthew Potts. Coming to the plate now, the DH, Tucker Dunlap. And Dunlap will look at the first one, ball one. Pretty big inning for Matthew Potts in the third. He did give up a solo home run to C.D. White, but he struck out the side as well as that home run. Big cut and a miss on the breaking ball there by Potts. So Dunlap now with kind of one and one. The series between Northeastern and Northwestern goes way back to 1948. Back in 48, Northwestern won that first game ever. Six to one as we look at strike two catching the plate. Wow, that was a big curveball. I don't I can't believe that caught. One ball and two strikes. So first game 1948, won by Northwestern. There's been a total of 29 games played between these two teams. That pitch is bounces low for ball two. And the series right now is 15 to 14 in favor of Northeastern. Last time these two met up was back on April 5th and Northwestern lost that one 13 to three. This pitch swung and a miss, strike three. So that's a fourth strikeout in five batters for Matthew Potts. Started off a little slow, gave up four runs back in the second, but he's come on strong with four strikeouts. And that'll be strikeout number I believe 27 on the season for Potts. So with one down, Colin Klingensmith coming to the plate. The lefty walked and scored a run his first time up, and he'll look at strike one. One down, nobody on here, top of the fourth inning. And here's the pitch to Klingensmith, and that ball's hit. Oh, Hoffman with a nice move to going off first base. Dive attempt at first, and they say he's going to be out. Hoffman reaching far to his right, scooped it up, flipped to the pitcher, Potts covering, and Klingensmith dove in there, and I think it's a judgment call, but they called him out. So what great defense by the Rangers. That'll go down as the unique 3-1 to one for two down now here in the top of the fourth. Boy, remember that defensive effort there by Hoffman. That, that definitely saved a base hit. And that's going to bring up the number nine hitter, shortstop, Cademan Groff, and he squares to butt but pulls back in time for ball one. Groff got things going in this game with a two RBI double and eventually scored back in the second inning. And for Groff, that was his... 24th RBI on the season as he follows this one off the end of the bat. Groff came in hitting 287. And he's from Enos, Texas. Played a little bit of baseball at Emporia State before transferring to Northeastern. Big cut and a miss there for strike two. Count now one and two with two down here in the top of the fourth inning. So yeah, we have that down officially now for Matthew Potts. It's 27 strikeouts on the season. Big curveball hit to shortstop. Guerrero scoops it up one hop. Cannon over to first for the out. And what a beautiful one, two, three inning for the Rangers.
And we are back here once again. Bottom of the fourth inning here at Myo Stadium in Glass Family Field. Northwestern coming to the plate. Blake Hoffman going to lead it off. Hoffman struck out his first time up. And strikeouts have been the nature of the game the last inning and a half. The Rangers have struck out three of their last four times up. And Northeastern struck out four of their last seven times up. So strikeouts are picking up just a little bit as we see ball one outside. Hoff Minna, 2021 All-American. Comes in hitting 343 on the season with 11 home runs. Giles works from the first base out of the rubber. This ball is hit to right field, diving to his left. His brothers scoops it up, throws to first. And Northeastern having some good defensive play as well for out number one. So one down now here in the bottom of the fourth. Sean Kelly coming to the plate. And Kelly got all the offense started for Northwestern back in the second as he had a one-out double for the first hit of the game for Northwestern. He eventually scored on the three-run homer by Hayden Priest. Sean Kelly out of Arlington, Texas, right-hitting junior. Getting a chance to play some center field today. And he looks at a slider. Strike one swinging. Way out in front on that one. And here's the 0-1 pitch. That ball's way outside. It gets away from the catcher. Heads to the backstop. Umpire is going to be a good sportsman and run back and pick that up for everybody. Count goes to 1-1 one one with one down here in the bottom of the fourth. Sean Kelly, a just above a 300 hitter. This one's crushed into left field, but that's going to go off into the parking lot and out of play. He got way out in front of that and got a good bat on that ball. So counting out one and two on Kelly. He's just got to watch out for that bit of a slider pitch here from Giles that just sneaks off the plate. Here's the pitch. Yeah, way inside. Almost a brush pad back pitch there. Two and two now the count. That did not look intentional. Looks like it just kind of got away from Giles on that one. Working quickly now. Here's the pitch. And he did. There's a slider outside, and Kelly couldn't touch it. And that'll be strike three. That is the fifth strikeout of the game for Giles, moving him to 23 on the season. Giles did not have a very big strikeout to innings pitch rate, but he's picking him up fast here in this game. Now coming to the plate, the left-handed hitting Braden Koenig, and he'll look at strike one on the inside part of the plate. On deck is Hayden Priest. Priest hit that three-run home run back in the second inning. And the pitch to Koenig, this ball is hit into center field, fairly deep, going back as Kaiser against the wall and makes the play. So Koenig gave that one a ride, but just about 10 feet too short. And that'll be all for Northwestern. We head to the top of the fifth. Northwestern trails by two. We'll be right back on the Ranger Sports Network.
And we're back here once again in Elva, Oklahoma. This is Fred Abishan bringing you Ranger Baseball. Coming to the plate now is going to be leadoff hitter Blake Freeman. As he'll look at ball one outside. Freeman two for two with a couple of singles. Also has an RBI and scored a run. Starting pitcher Matthew Potts still on the mound here for the Rangers. That pitch misses just inside for ball two. Northeastern on top right now, five to three here in the top of the fifth. And with the 2-0 count, here's the pitch. Ball skips in for ball three. And with the way this team steals bases, you don't want to let anybody on base. However, Matthew Potts already with two pickoffs in this game. Here's the pitch. In there for a strike, taking all the way is Freeman. Freeman leads the team in batting average, hitting 429 coming into today. He's definitely improved that mark as well. This ball way inside almost hits him, and that'll be ball four. So that'll be the 14th walk of the season delivered by Matthew Potts. And for Freeman, that is his 21st time getting the free pass. That's going to bring up the number two hitter, second baseman, Blaze Brothers. Brothers one for two. He's singled and flew out to the left field. Pickoff attempt in easily is Freeman. So nobody down, one on top of the fifth inning. And the pitch to Brothers in there for strike one. Northwestern looking for their 19th win of the season. They have to do a little bit of a comeback here to pick that win up. Northeastern sits on 28 wins and 13 losses. And here's the pitch. Curveball, it does not catch. And the count will go to one and one on Blaze Brothers. Brothers out of Springdale, Arkansas. Right-handed hitting junior. Here's the pitch, way out in front of that one. Ball is dropped, but scooped up nicely there by Hayden Priest, and the count will go to one and two. Again, nobody down here in the top of the fifth. Stolen base threat in Freeman. He leads the team with 23 stolen bases on the season. That is an amazing amount of stolen bases. One and two the count. Look, a long look in there. Here's the pitch. This one's going to be fouled on the third baseline. That one's going to bounce into the field of play. We'll have to recover that one. It'll be just a moment. Count goes to one and two. Matthew Potts making his 11th appearance on the season. Works in the stretch position. Pickoff attempt. That was close to a balk. He picked his foot up, wiggled it back and forth a little bit, and then threw to first base. He's going to have to be careful not to cross that knee. And here's the pitch. That ball's hit high and deep into left field. Going back is Joseph Frisbee. He can't make the play. Gone over the left field wall. Just missing the scoreboard by about a foot. And Blaze Brothers breaks this lead open with a two-run shot to left field. That one traveled about 380 feet into left center. And now Northeastern on top, 7-3. to three. Scoring for the second time in the game, Blaze Freeman comes across as well. So Northeastern picking up their second home run of the season. And for Brothers, that was his 10th home run. Taking all the way is Brock Reller, the lefty. As he looks at strike one, Reller has been hit by a pitch and struck out. Up there for his third time to the plate. 
It's, and he's been hit once again. And I can't think that uh, that's intentional for the second time, but he is a big guy that can hit the ball a ton. And so far, he has not had a chance to make any contact. And going out to the mound for a minute, it's going to be the catcher, Hayden Priest. I don't see anybody loosening up in the bullpen for the Rangers, so Priest probably just trying to get them to calm down just a bit. That will count as an official mound visit. And that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, number 16, first baseman, C.D. White. White flew out to right field and hit a solo shot back in the third inning. For C.D. White, it was his 10th home run on the season. So nobody down, one on, two runs already across, White at the plate. And they got him picked off. Quick throw down a second, and they get him safe. That was some amazing wheels by Reller. They had him picked off, and he ends up sliding and getting under the tag of Guerrero. And they're going to call time. It looks like uh, actually Hamakawa getting cleaned up there. I thought that was Guerrero, but it was Hamakawa covering the bag. It looks like he got spiked a little bit. And he just needed a second, but he's good. So that'll be a stolen base by Reller. And for Reller, that is his eighth stolen base and nine attempts on the season. So man on second, still nobody down. C.D. White, White at the plate. And long, long look in there for Matthew Potts. Here's the pitch. Inside and low, ball one. Still not seeing any activity in the Ranger bullpen. So it looks like they're going to stick with Matthew Potts at least through the fifth inning. And the 1-0 pitch. This ball slapped into center field. It's going to get by Hamakawa. White's going to come around to score. Here's the throw cut off by Hoffman. And no throw to the plate. That'll be an RBI single for C.D. White, his second RBI of the game. That's going to go ahead and bring uh, Coach Bowen to the mound, and we are going to see some activity now in the bullpen. So we'll take a break for a moment as Coach Bowen has a quick talk with his team. And we are ready to resume play here again in the top of the fifth inning here in Elva. Coach Bone having a nice long talk with his team. And talk paid off as we look at strike one here to Braden Rodden. Rodden 0 for 2. A ground out and a strikeout. So one on and nobody down. Three runs have scored in the inning already. This ball is going to be low. Runner's going to go as it gets passed. It'll be a pass ball. It sure looked like Priest had that, and it bounced off his glove and went behind him. And that'll probably go down as a pass ball against Hayden Priest. So runner now at second. Still nobody down. Count goes to one and one. Warming up in the bullpen for the Rangers. Right-handed senior Edwin Colon. 
getting a little bit of sunshine peeking out now. Lights are still on, but it's getting a little bit brighter out there. And here's the pitch. Curveball swung on and fouled on the third base line. I really have liked the breaking balls today by Potts. I think his fastball has been the biggest problem so far. He's just locating it a little bit too much middle-middle. And the ball has been driven pretty well here today by a good hitting ball club in Northeastern. Here's the one and two pitch. This ball hit to short. Guerrero throw to third. Nice job. Good defensive heads up play by Brian Guerrero as he gets the runner C.D. White trying to advance. So that'll go down as a fielder's choice. And Guerrero throws over to Holdren for the for the second out or the, for the first out there in the inning. So that'll go down as a six to five. For out number one, that's going to bring out Matt Kaiser. Kaiser 0 for 2. I'm sorry, excuse me, 1 for 2. He singled and struck out. This ball is hit fouled on the first base line. And the sun is definitely breaking through it now. It just looks so much nicer out there when we got the sun coming out for baseball. So it's one down and one on here. Top of the fifth inning. Kaiser at the plate. He squares the butt. The ball is dropped by the catcher, Priest, but recovers nicely. On that bunt attempt, he pulled back as it was out of the zone. Count will go to one and one. Northeastern with eight runs on nine hits, no errors. Northwestern, three runs, three hits, and no errors as well. They've had some great defense. And this ball is low in there for ball two. Great defense by Northwestern. Unfortunately, the bats thus far have been a lot stronger by Northeastern. And so we're out hitting Northwestern 9-3. to three. Here's the 2-1 and one pitch. Curveball, strike two. Good looking curve there by Matthew Potts. So with 2-2 two and two now the count, one, one on and one down. Here's the pitch to Kaiser. Another curveball strike three. Great pitching there by Potts. Again, using that breaking ball. Picks up number strikeout number 28 on the season. And Kaiser strikes out for the second time. Coming to the plate now is going to be the DH, number 25. Right-handed hitting Tucker Dunlap. Dunlap one for two. He struck out, but also singled and scored a run. Dunlap comes in hitting 278 on the season. Picked up his 23rd hit back in the second inning. Pickoff attempt back safely is Rodden. And with the no count, here's the pitch. Way out in front, strike one on Dunlap. Unofficially, I have five strikeouts in the game so far for Matthew Potts. And the pitch here by Potts. Takes a little bit off that one that's high and misses. Count will go to one and one. Dunlap from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Here's the pitch. Takes something off that one as well. Way out in front is Dunlap. Strike two. I really think if he can continue to mix up more breaking balls and fastballs and move those fastballs around, Potts is a heck of a pitcher when he's got that kind of control. Here's the pitch. That ball is in there. Stopped nicely there by Priest. Count will now go to two and two. Two down here in the top of the fifth. Man on first, three runs have scored. Potts working quickly. He's all set. Move to first and back safely is Rodden.
Potts almost picked up his third pickoff a little while ago, but C.D. White was able to slide into second safely. This ball's curveball, strike three, and he gets another one. Six strikeout now for Potts, and we head to the bottom of the fifth. Northwestern still trails by five. We'll be right back at the And welcome back once again here to Meyer Stadium and Glass Family Field. Bottom of the fifth inning, Northwestern trails eight to three. Coming to the plate is going to be catcher Hayden Priest. And Priest will look at a pitch low there for ball one. Going the distance so far for Northeastern, Cordell Giles pitching a gem. Had a rough number, second inning, but innings one, first, sorry, inning one, three, and four. Big zeros by Northwestern. There's a base hit by Priest. Priest had a three-run homer. Back in the second, he follows it up now with a single. Great start here for Northwestern, getting the leadoff hitter on. That's the first time they've done that in this game. That'll bring up the left fielder, number two, Joseph Frisbee. Frisbee flew out to center field his last time up. Joseph out of Denton, Texas, a left-handed hitting sophomore. Comes in hitting 263 on the season. This ball's fouled off straight back. Northwestern comes in with a record of 18 and 24, 11 and 16 in conference play. They're at the bottom third of the conference right now, still, has a still have a chance for the playoffs, but they're gonna need to pick up quite a few wins in these last two conference series to keep that hope alive. 0-1 now the count. Here's the pitch outside for a ball, ball one. Joseph Frisbee playing in left field today, has 21 hits on the season. He's also scored 15 runs and has a couple of stolen bases, as well as six doubles and a home run, and he has a big swing and a miss there for strike two. So Frisbee looking for his first hit of the game. Nobody down, one on here in the bottom of the fifth. Northwestern needs to pick up a couple here, keep this game close. Working from the stretch position, first base side of the rubber is Giles. Here's the pitch, way outside for a ball. Count will go to two and two. On the season so far, Giles has came into today pitching 22 and two thirds innings. He's gone Four strong so far, giving up just three runs. All of those on one swing of the bat by the man sitting on first base, Hayden Priest. Pickoff move, not an aggressive one. Back easily is Priest. Hayden Priest picked up his seventh home run of the season back in the second. And 
And this ball is hit towards second, bobbled by Brothers, tries to pick it up, throw over to second, and they're going to call him safe. It looked like he may have been out, but uh, I think the umpire was distracted by the bobble, and he ended up calling Priest safe. So we have runners on first and second with nobody down. And it just came, it just became aware to me that uh, Northeastern comes into Alva today, ranked number three. I'm not sure if that's in the region or in the nation. <laughs> number three in the nation in NCAA Division II. So, yeah, pretty tough opponent here in the form of Northeastern. Pretty impressive for them to be number three in the country. Big cut and a miss there by Brian Guerrero. Unfortunately, I don't think that'll go down as a single for Joseph Frisbee. Got to be considered a fielder's choice. Only good news is, is that everybody was safe. This pitch skips in, and keeping it out in front is Braden Rodden. So count goes to one and one. Looming on deck right now is the DH, Brett Erickson. I'm sure he would love to get another chance, especially potentially with the bases loaded or at least two on. I think if the score is a little closer, you'd see Guerrero bunting here, but with a five-point or five-run deficit, you kind of got to keep the outs to a minimum. This ball is slapped to left field. It's going to be in there for a hit. Priest is going to round third. He's coming home, bobbled in left field. It's going to allow Frisbee to advance to third, and Guerrero with a big RBI single. That will score Priest, and now there's runners at the corners. So for Guerrero on the season, that's only his sixth RBI. But that's a good one to come against a team like this. Now the score is 8-4. And this will be an interesting situation with Erickson at the plate. He's got a lot of speed. A ball hit in the infield could only result in one out with Brett's speed. And he almost gets hit in the head. That ball is behind his head. Erickson not happy with that pitch. I don't want to say that was intentional, but that looked like a pitch out of anger. It wasn't, I don't think, meant to be thrown at his head, but he did not have any control on that released. So count now 1-0 on Erickson. Here's the pitch. This ball is crushing the left field, going to be an RBI single. And the hits keep coming. Erickson picking up his first hit of the game. And on the season, that's RBI number five. So Guerrero and Erickson only combined for nine RBIs the entire season. They've now had back-to-back -back RBIs to keep the Rangers alive. And you've got to think that we get some activity moving in the bullpen for Northeastern, though I don't see much. There's a guy doing some laps, but he might just be a little cold and trying to warm the body up. Coming to the plate now, Hugo Hamakawa. Hamakawa has walked and struck out in this game, and he's due for a big hit right here. Nobody down, two on. Two across already. Hamakawa looks at ball one. As I do with every time I do the play-by-play uh, -play for the Rangers, I know that Hugo's family, especially his father back in Tokyo, listening in. Happy to have those fans from Tokyo, Japan, listening to the Rangers Sports Network. So the 1-0 and count here on Hugo. Here's the pitch. This ball is popped up into left field. Could be playable and will be caught by the left fielder, Freeman. Runners will not advance, and that'll be out number one. Hugo really didn't even want to swing at that one. It's kind of a half swing. I think he was just trying to fight it off and uh, got too much of a piece of it. That'll bring up third baseman, Brandon Holdren. Holdren so far 0 for 2. He struck out and hit into a double play. Like to see Holdren come through here for the Rangers. He represents the tying run. And there is still there is a little bit of activity going on in the bullpen now for the Riverhawks. No one throwing yet, just people moving about. This pitch is way outside. A tempted curveball it doesn't catch for ball one. Holdren grounded out to short his first time up and struck out back in the third inning. A 338 hitter. 
pulled you right out of Baytown, Texas, looking to cut this lead here for the Rangers. Rangers picking up two already, and he'll look at strike one low. That's a good take. That's not a pitch he's going to do much with. Although that big gap on the left side, if he could hit there, we've had a couple of singles hit through that gap out of our lefties. I'd like to see another one of those. Outfield is straight away. The infield is shifted with the thoughts of a possible pull from the left-handed hitter. One-on-one -on -one count. Here's the pitch way outside. Good stop there by Rodden. Cade Matson in the press box with me, helping me out with my play-by-play, -play, giving me the important statistical information that I need. Show me that Northeastern's ranked number three in the nation. I think I saw Oklahoma Baptist number one in the nation. Wow, what a what a region we're in. This is great. Here's the pitch. It's oh, he big cut at that one and just got a piece and fouled that one back. Yeah, you gotta love when you're in a sport in which you know two of the top three teams in the country are in your region. Count now goes to two and two with one down here. Two men on bottom of the fifth inning. Northeastern didn't score any in the first. They got four in the second, one in the third, none in the fourth, three in the fifth. Northwestern answered back. They didn't get any in the first, but got three back in the second. Went blank in the third and fourth. They picked up two here in the fifth to cut the lead to eight to five. Long look in by Giles. This pitch is way outside. Count will go to full. Boy, wouldn't I? I got to tell you, I would love to see if bases loaded for Blake Hoffman. You couldn't ask for a better scenario here. And if you're Northeastern, you got to be thinking the same thing. You don't want to walk Holdren. So they're going to have to come after him with something, I would think, over the heart of the play. I don't think you try to risk the walk and go to the righty-left up, righty up matchup that uh, favors Blake Hoffman. Count full, and the pitcher will step off and take a look at second base. So Cordell Giles on the mound here for Northeastern. He's got a record of 3-1. and one. He's got the lead right now. A sophomore out of Salisaw, Oklahoma. Right-handed pitcher. Works from the first base side of the rubber. And the payoff pitch. That's down low. Ball four. And that's going to load the bases here for the All-American, Blake Hoffman. And surprisingly, no visit from the dugout in this situation. So again, Blake Hoffman coming to the plate. He is 0 for 2, and if somebody is due or even overdue, it's the All-American, Blake Hoffman. Hoffman with 45 RBIs to lead the team on the season. And the first pitch to Blake is hit down the first base side and foul. That's not the pitch he wanted. That ball broke in on his hands a little bit. But it just shows you how hungry Blake is to get his team back up in this game. He actually represents the go-ahead run here in the bottom of the fifth. Exciting situation here for the Rangers. Bases loaded, one down. This ball is hit towards second base, moving to his right. His brother is throwing a second for one, really to first. It's not going to be in time, and it gets away from the first base, but that's going to allow a run to score. So that's actually going to go down as a fielder's choice, and it should be an RBI for Hoffman because the double play was not turned. The second run score was not an RBI. It was because of the error. So that's fun for me to have to mark down. Fielder's choice, RBI for Hoffman. Scoring Guerrero. Holdren was out on the force out. And Erickson scored all the way from second base. So now it's a one-run game. Rangers down by just one. Man on first, two down. And the first pitch here to Sean Kelly is swung on and missed for strike one. So once again, Hoffman hit into a fielder's choice, picks up an RBI, a run scores via the error, 
as the ball got away from the first baseman on the double play attempt. Another swing and a miss. Sean Kelly trying to help the Rangers get the lead. Two big swings. And so with two down, one on here, bottom of the fifth, Northwestern trails eight to seven. Sean Kelly has a 0-2 count. He's already struck out once. He's also doubled and scored a run. Trying to keep the inning alive for Northwestern. He hits this one foul and out of play into the Ranger dugout. And the Ranger dugout is starting to show a lot of enthusiasm as their team is back in this game right now. Not sure who's going to come back out and pitch. If it's going to be Matthew Potts or maybe Edwin Colon as he was warming up in the bullpen. Sean Kelly at the plate, officially one for two. Here's the pitch. Ball's inside and low for ball one. This has been a really long inning now for Cordell Giles as he's been touched up for four runs already. There's a lot of activity, a lefty throwing in the bullpen for the Riverhawks. There's the pitch in there for strike three, and Kelly, the bat, stayed on his shoulder for that one. He'll go down looking. And welcome back. Fred Albuchon bringing you Ranger Baseball. Top of the sixth inning, Northwestern trails eight to seven. Coming to the plate is going to be the third base from number 27, Colin Klingensmith. Klingensmith is 0 for 1 officially with a walk and scored a run. As he'll look at strike one here from relief pitcher Edwin Colon. Colon comes in with a 5 and 2 record. Hasn't had a start all season, so 5 and 2 in relief has been pretty impressive. This is his 17th appearance. First base uh, diving there is Hoffman, and he makes a great stop. That's going to go down as an infield signal. That ball was crushed on the right field line. And Hoffman diving to his left makes a stop. And a good effort there, but easily in at first base. With his first hit is Klingensmith. Klingensmith came in hitting at 331 on the season. He's probably right about that same average at this time. And that'll bring Cademan Groff to the plate. Groff is one for two. He had an RBI double to get things started 
back in the bottom of the second. Bunt attempt thrown up into the chin level there by Cologne. That goes ball one. So Cologne making his 17th appearance, 5-2 and two record, a 3.8 ERA. He's given up 10 earned runs in 23rd plus innings. He has 21 strikeouts to go with 17 walks. Pickoff move, thrown a little high. Nice stop there by Hoffman. So to tell you how this single just happened a moment ago for Klingensmith, the ball was hit down the right field line. Hoffman made a diving stop. The ball trickled over to Hamakawa, who almost scooped and threw it to the pitcher. Cologne covering it first, but not in time for the infield single for Klingensmith. Last pitch over for a strike. The count goes to one and one. Graf, a short stop out of Enos, Texas. Another pickoff attempt very high. Hoffman has to jump to save that one. And I, and I think uh, Hoffman had a little something to say to Clone as he was walking the ball back to him a little bit, saying, all right, let's keep that one on the infield. Don't throw it over my head. This ball's fouled off straight back, and the count will go to one and two. Still very overcast here in Elva. We still have the lights on as well. Now 67 degrees, and winds still out of the south have increased now to the low to mid-20s, hitting at 24 as of right now. That ball is outside. Count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Still free ice cream day here at the ballpark. Scoops ice cream being delivered to Meyer Stadium. Very decorative scoops van out there bringing out the ice cream for everybody. Ball is high and inside for ball three. Count goes to full, and knowing this team, Kling and Smith will be on the run. On the season, he's had 16 stolen bases on 20 attempts. He does not go. This ball's popped up. Hamakawa coming in, Guerrero coming in. Guerrero calls him off. That'll be out number one. That ball really carrying with the wind. Hamakawa was calling for it originally, and that ball carried all the way over to the shortstop Guerrero, who finally makes the put out for out number one. That'll bring, uh, excuse me, that'll bring the top of the order back up, and that's Blake Freeman, the left-handed hitting left fielder, coming to the plate. Freeman is two for two with a couple of singles, a walk. He scored a couple of runs as well. Pickoff move back safely is Klingensmith. Northeastern wearing their black tops with white trim, their gray pants, black hats. Northwestern with their white tops, white pants, all red trim and red hats as we look at strike one here to Freeman. Again, Freeman perfect on the day. Two for two and a walk and again scored two runs. One on one down. Here's the pitch. This ball's popped into left field. Short left field. Going to be trouble. All the Rangers merging over. It's going to be in there for a single. Frisbee be able to pick it up on one hop. And Cologne smartly covering third base to make sure that Klingon Smith doesn't advance. And that'll be the third hit today for Freeman. Already leads the team hitting 429 on the season. That is his 73rd hit of the season. Sun shining very brightly. Found a little break in the clouds here. Now bring to the plate Blaze Brothers. Brothers flew out, singled back in the second, and eventually hit a two-run homer back in the fifth. This pitch looked good in there for strike one. Catches the inside part of the black that time. No activity in the bullpen for the Rangers. We do have some activity down in the bullpen for Northeastern. So 0-1 the count, one down. Two men on here in the top of the sixth inning. And here's the pitch. Good looking pitch just outside, taking all the way on that one was Brothers. So Brothers picked up his 10th home run, and he also has 36 RBIs on the season. Two for three officially on the day. Cologne works. 
inside pitch for a strike. He caught him on the handle that time swinging. Count goes to one and two. So Cologne works heavily from the first base side of the rubber. I would say his heel lines up perfectly with the edge of the rubber, right-handed pitcher. Infield and double play depth. Outfield looks pretty much straight away. Center field pretty deep. Sean Kelly is pretty close to the warning track out there. That ball almost hits Brothers, and this is not a place you want to have a hit by pitch, especially with Rock Reller coming to the plate with C.J. White behind him. You do not want to have bases loaded for those two guys. So two and two the count, one down, two on. And the pitch, this ball's popped up and going to come out of play behind us. Wind is really gusting right now. It's definitely hitting 20, 24, 25, and sometimes even higher. Blowing straight out to center field. If you can hit one to the outfield, you've got a chance to get it over the fence. Tight ball game here. Northwestern playing the number three team in the north in the nation in Northeastern State. In there for strike three. Tough call framed beautifully by Hayden Priest. And that'll be strikeout number one for relief pitcher Edwin Cologne. That's a big strikeout for out number two. But you still have two big hitters coming to the plate. The first one, and Brock Reller. Reller has... Had an RB or hit a, uh, sorry, excuse me, he did not hit the home run. He struck out back in the third, has been hit by a pitch twice. He also stole a base and scored. And the first pitch here to Reller, swung on a miss, big cut, strike one. This would be pretty big if Cologne can keep any runs from crossing the plate this inning and keep his team in the game, especially as we are in the Heart of the sixth inning at this point. And here's the pitch. Crushed into right field deep. That's a no doubter. Gone. That ball hit into right center. That's about probably 415 feet into right center for a three run bomb by Reller. And unfortunately for the Rangers, all those runs they scored back in the fifth have just. Almost been recapped here in the top of the fifth, sixth with another three shot here by Northeastern. Wow, that Cade kind of shook his head when I did. That was a shot. That was hit deep into right center field. And just like that, Northeastern got their lead a little bit higher as the score is now 11 to 7. And that brings up C.D. White. And he hits one high, and it's going to go out of play behind us. C.D. White flew out to right field, hit a solo shot back in the third. He also singled in the fifth. He's officially two for three with a couple of RBIs and a home run. And C.D. follows this one off as well. So the one thing this team does really well for Northeastern is hit home runs. Although they do a lot of things well. But they can hit the long ball. They came in on the season hitting 82 home runs in 41 games. 0-2 now the count here on White. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that'll be all. We head to the bottom of the sixth.
same thing to tie this game up as they trail 11 to 7. Starting pitcher Cordell Giles still on the mound for Northeastern. Braden Koenig coming to the plate. He's one for two. He's singled and scored a run. Giles sets. He deals. That pitch is outside for ball two. So a little update on statistics. Brothers, excuse me, Reller hit his 21st home run of the season. That leads NCAA Division II. And here's the pitch. This ball is hit high into deep right center. Kaiser going back. Against the warning track, looks up, catches it, flying up against the wall. And Northwestern coming up just a few feet short of getting a solo bomb there from Koenig. And a really nice play there by Kaiser. Gets the hat tip from his starting pitcher, Giles, for out number one. Exciting thing about what we're watching today, you got players on both these teams, but probably mostly in Northeastern at the moment, of guys that are probably going to be drafted, especially a hitter like Reller, the guy who leads Division II in home runs, probably pretty close to the league lead in uh, the Division League in RBIs as well, as he's well over 60. Strike one by Hayden Priest. Priest is two for two, a home run and a single. And strike two there to Priest. Priest way out in front wanting to try to get a home run again. Swinging very aggressively, but missing wildly on these pitches that are outside. Priest had a three-run homer back in the second, producing all three runs. And this ball, same location, but taken all the way there. Brock Reller right now sits number six, it looks like, in the nation overall in RBIs to go with Number one in home runs. Check swing, the pitch in the same location, even wider that time, but that'll move the count to two and two. One down here in the bottom of the six. Nobody on. And Northwestern could use a few base runners. Game is not out of hand. It's close. Ooh, just missing high there. The catcher, Rodden, was ready to throw down to third base. Thought that was a strikeout. Instead, it's a full count. And Priest... Uh, playing against an extreme shift on the infield. As he hits this one, fouling out of play, the first baseman, C.D. White, is kind of playing a modified second base. The rest of the infield is to the left of second base. Outfield straight away against Priest, but they are definitely playing him to pull, even with the full count. That ball's wild. That'll be ball four. And Hayden Priest will draw a walk getting on base for the third time today. So with one down, we have one on here, and coming to the plate is going to be Joseph Frisbee. And we are going to get a pitching change by Northeastern, so we'll take a break for a few moments. I'll be right back on the Ranger Sports Network.
And we are back here once again on the Ranger Sports Network, still in the bottom of the six, one on, one down for the Rangers. Relief pitcher Cohen Bell now on the mound here for Northeastern. He'll throw a breaking ball into Joseph Frisbee for strike one. Lefty-lefty matchup. Bell works from the middle of the rubber stretch position, comes in for his 11th appearance, excuse me, 23rd appearance on the season. He has a 3-0 record and an impressive 3.60 ERA in 30 innings pitched. Big swing and a miss there by Frisbee way out in front. Bell out of Grapevine, Texas, played at Grayson Community College in Texas. Give up 12 earned runs, 14 walks to go with 24 strikeouts in his 30 innings. He inherits one runner with a big lead here, 11 to seven here in the bottom of the sixth. Fastball hit into left field, gonna trail foul into the Ranger bullpen. And the count will stay 0-2. No activity in either one of the bullpens at this time. And now both starters out of the game. Pitchers of record so far will be Cordell Giles on track for a win at this moment. This ball is hit into right field for a base hit. Hayden Priest will slow up at second base. Sharply hit there by Joseph Frisbee, picking up his first hit of the game. And starting pitcher for Northwestern, Matthew Potts, still has the tab for a potential loss unless things change here in the late innings. Now Northwestern with two runners on, only one down. And that's going to bring up shortstop Brian Guerrero. Guerrero struck out back in the second, then had an RBI single and scored a run back in the fifth. Guerrero looking to pick up his second hit, he hit here. He'd probably get RBI in the process if he did. And he'll take ball one just outside. The outfield in just a little bit, even though the wind is blowing out against Guerrero, expecting more of a line drive hitter. Right field in quite a bit. Infield is in double play depth as expected. And the 1-0 count, here's the pitch. This one's hit to third base. Going to be playable, called foul, it just skipped foul. That would have been an infield single as Klingensmith still threw to first base in case it was called fair and that ball was not in time with the speed of Guerrero. That ball was fair all the way until right before the third base bag and then it skipped foul just in front of the bag. That would have been an ideal hit here for the Rangers to load the bases up for Brett Erickson. But regardless, it's a one and one count with one down, still two on here in the bottom of the sixth. Rangers, seven runs on seven hits, no errors. Northeastern, 11 runs on 12 hits. They've actually had two errors in the game defensively. Swung on a miss, strike two. Guerrero could not make contact at all with that one. Ryan resets himself. He straightens the batting gloves. He's rethinking his approach here with the one and two count. He wants to put the bat on the ball. He's got the speed to avoid the double play. And here's the pitch. Just outside. Good eye there by Guerrero. Count goes to two and two. Leaf pitcher Cohen Bell on the mound. Now here's the pitch. Way outside for ball three. Ideal situation here for Northwestern. If you're a relief pitcher, you don't want to walk the number nine hitter ever. So I got to think that Guerrero is going to get something in the zone here. He'll be looking to protect. Again, 3-2 count, one down, two on here. Bottom of the sixth inning. Cohen Bell on the mound in relief. Here's the pitch. That ball's inside for ball three. Good take there by Guerrero, and that's going to load him up. And coming to the plate now is going to be the right-handed hitting, designated hitter, Brett Erickson. Erickson hit two deep fly balls to center field back in the first and third innings, both for outs. And then he came through with an RBI single in the fifth and eventually scored a run as well. 
Erickson will be looking to make solid contact here. He needs to drive the ball out of the infield and find a way to get at least one run. Here's a pitch low and outside fastball for ball one. Cohen, a long, lanky lefty, seeing six foot three out there. Senior out of Grapevine, Texas. Here's the pitch. Threw a change up in there. Got way out ahead of Erickson for ball or for strike one. Count goes to one and one. I love sitting here with Cade Madsen, my my helper here in the press box. He's a man of few words. Just sits here and enjoys the game with me. Here's the pitch. Outside ball two. Kate, I got to get you involved in the conversation. So in this situation, two and one's the count, one down, base is loaded, tying run at the plate. Are you thinking breaking ball here again, trying to get him swing at something, risking the three and one count, or does he come come after Erickson? You gonna go breaking ball? I'm th I'm thinking breaking ball as well. We'll see what he comes with. Fastball down the heart of the plate. We're both wrong, and Erickson didn't swing at that thing, so he caught him off guard. But that's why we're up here. We're not one of those coaches down there, you know, making these tough decisions. So count now goes to two and two. I'm thinking your breaking ball might be coming now, though. Yeah, yeah, I try to get him to, to hit one into the ground. And that was a breaking ball, and taking all the way was Erickson. Not taking all the way, but it was a really low and inside pitch, and taking smartly, I should say. How about this? Full count in this situation. You got a quality hitter at the plate right now and Erickson you got speed on the base pass you got speed at the plate anything on the ground could score a run even if it's on the infield oh the breaking ball now he goes with it and strike three I did not want to see that Erickson is furious I'm I'm disappointed I wanted to see a hit there but yeah nice change up for sure so Erickson walking back very slowly trying to control, I would assume, anger at this moment. He looks really upset. So that's going to be a strikeout here for the relief pitcher, Cohen Bell. Two down now here in the bottom of the sixth. Coming up is going to be Hugo Hamakawa. And Hamakawa, the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. He'll look at strike one over the heart of the plate. Hamakawa does have power. He's more of a, a solid base hit type hitter. On the season, Hamakawa has 55 hits to go with 26 walks, but he also has six home runs as he looks at ball one. Nice stop there by the catcher, Braden Rodden. That's actually amazing. 55 hits and 26 walks. He also has 17 total extra base hits on the season. Now would be a great time to see one of those. Here's the pitch. This ball is hit towards second. Should be playable for Brothers. Picks up, throws to first, and the bases will stay stranded or loaded and stranded. We had.
And we are back here once again on the Ranger Sports Network. Brad Abishan bringing you Ranger Baseball. Top of the seventh inning, Northeastern on top, 11-7. Relief pitcher Edwin Cologne on the mound for the Rangers. Catcher Braden Rodden coming to the plate. Rodden officially 0 for 3 on the day. Ground out, hit into a fielder's choice, and he also struck out. Rodden, a 338 hitter on the season, has seven home runs and 36 RBIs coming into today's game. This ball skips in for ball two. On the day so far, through six complete innings, Northeastern 11 runs on 12 hits. They have two errors. Northwestern seven runs with seven hits. It's a big swing and a miss there by Rodden. Northwestern has zero errors on the day. They've actually had some fantastic defense. Just some really good hitting here to go with Northeastern's play today. Rodden taking a couple extra swings out of the batter's box. Again, count two and one, nobody down. And now we have a timeout call. And it looks like the head coach of Northeastern Jake Hendrick is calling his hitter over. It looks like he might have hurt something on that swing as the umpire went over with him to have the conversation. And Coach Hendrick is, I think, making sure that his catcher is okay. So a long time out there to, to check on Rodden. And he's still going to take a couple more swings. He doesn't look, doesn't look like he's hurt. It looks like he's okay, but he just may have tweaked something. And to stay safe... Uh, Coach was just checking on him. Count is two and one now, nobody down. Here's the pitch. Ball's hit into left field. Rodden put that one straight down the left field line. It's gonna go all the way to the wall. He has got wheels. He is going into second easily. And before the ball's even cut off, he's already around second. He'll stay at second with a double for his first hit of the game. And for Rodden, that's his 10th double on the season. Coming to the plate now is going to be the center fielder, Matt Kaiser. Kaiser has singled and struck out twice. Kaiser, a left-handed hitting sophomore, stands 6-3 out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And here's the first pitch to Kaiser. This ball is hit in between first and third. It goes off yeah. Hoffman's hand off his glove, and the run is going to score easily. And that'll definitely go down as a hit and an RBI single here for Kaiser. He picks up his second hit of the game. And for Kaiser, that is RBI number 33 on the season. Northeastern now extends their lead to 12-7, and that'll bring up the DH, Tucker Dunlap. And we're just waiting for Kaiser to take off his protective equipment and give that to his coach at first base. We're all good to go now, so ready to resume play. Clone working from the stretch position. Quick throw over to first. And back safely is Kaiser. Dunlap on the day has struck out twice, singled, and scored a run. Nobody down, one run across already. Man on first. The number seven hitter at the plate. There goes the runner, and he will be in there safely. So a stolen base for Kaiser, and that is something that this team does extremely well maybe even better than hitting home runs as they steal bases. And for Kaiser, that's number 17 on the season on 19 attempts. So man on second now, Tucker Dunlap back with a 1-0 count. Cologne on the mound, working in relief. And here's the pitch. Swung on and miss. Strike one. Dunlap has struck out twice today. One
one and one the count again. Nobody down, man on second here in the top of the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. Ball's hit to third base, picked up by Holdren, throw over to first for out number one. So with one down, that'll bring up the third baseman, Colin Klingensmith. Klingensmith, one for two on the day. He singled, walked, and scored two runs. And Klingensmith will come up with, again, one down and a man on second. Collins out of Duncan, Oklahoma, the left-handed senior. He'll look at ball one. The ball bounced off the protective gear there of Hayden Priest and it almost rolled right back to the pitcher. No advance by the runner. Klingon Smith began his college career at Independence Community College in Kansas. And a quick pickoff move. Back safely is Kaiser. Edwin Colon making a nice pickoff move to second. Looked a little more, sh a little sharper than his moves have been to first base on the pickoff attempts. Here's the 1-0 pitch, up just a bit high. Count goes to 2-0. and Sitting at 5.13 here Central Time. Game started at 3 o'clock, so two hours and 13 minutes game time so far here in Elva, Oklahoma. And the pitch inside, ball three. So the number eight hitter, potential of drawing a walk. He did walk back in the second inning. Man on second, one down here. Cade McGroff on deck. And the pitch in there for a strike. Taking all the way was Klingensmith. So count goes to three and one on Klingensmith. Cologne taking his time. He's in no hurry. Long look in to Hayden Priest for the signs. And here's the pitch. Ball is swung on and fouled straight back. That'll move the count to full. Very overcast afternoon here in Elva. Not too cold, but it makes it feel cold. It's mid to upper 60s, but the wind is blowing aggressively out of the south. And hey, Clay and Smith will draw a walk, his second of the game. So now runners at first and second with just one down. That'll bring up. Cademan Groff. Even though the weather is just a tad bit cooler than we would have liked to have been today, we still have free ice cream from Scoops Ice Cream today. Been very gracious to be giving out ice cream to all the fans today. My wife is listening. No, I have not had any ice cream today. There's a pitch in there for strike one to Cademan Groff. Groff officially is one for three. He has had a two RBI double back in the second, grounded out to short, and flew out to short back in the sixth. Here we are in the seventh with two on and just one down. He's got a chance to help his team expand their lead. They're already up by five. And Cologne will step off and take a look at second. Last couple of innings have been a little bit longer here for the defense of Northwestern. Total of seven runs scored after over the last two and a third innings. Here's the pitch. Tempted curve there that stays kind of high. Count goes to one and one. Not seeing any activity in the northeastern bullpen. Although I think some guys are about to start warming up. This pitch is hit off the end of the bat and foul straight back. Count goes to one and two. Rangers have some activity. They've got somebody, a righty out there throwing. 
looks like it could be maybe Brooks Bishop. I can't really see from where I'm, my viewpoint, but it looks like possibly Brooks Bishop for Northwestern throwing down in the bullpen. One and two now the count. Clone is set. He deals. This ball is inside. Gets away. The runners are going to try to advance. Throw down to second, and they will not get him. He looks like he's safe. No call from either umpire on safe or out. Well, from, oh, they're going to call him out. He was definitely safe, 100% safe. No call by either umpire. And then they looked at each other, and the third base umpire called safe. The home plate umpire is coming out to have a discussion with the two umpires. I bet he calls him safe. He was definitely safe. There was no viewpoint from either one of the umpires to make the call. Hayden Priest gunned it down to second. Guerrero looked like he grabbed the ball cleanly, made the tag, but it was late. It looked like Klingensmith slid under the tag. On the wild pitch, Kaiser easily moved into third. They're going to call him out. I, I'm If there was a replay system in effect, I guarantee you he's safe. I think that's just an unfortunate, poor call by the umpires, but it, it definitely helps out Northwestern. I guess we'll take it from that standpoint. So it should go down as a wild pitch. Kaiser advancing to third, and then the throw out two to six for out number two on Klingensmith. Groff still at the plate. Now we're going to have a long conversation with Coach Hendrick with the home plate umpire. He's not being belligerent. He's not throwing a tantrum. He's just having a nice conversation. He disagrees with the call, and he should. It was, it was really the wrong call. But respectfully, he's going to go back with a five-run lead and realize that that's probably not hurting him at this moment. So count will resume at two and two with two down now here, a man on third. And a better situation here for Northwestern if they can get this final out with Groff. Again, Groff one for three on the day. And here's the pitch. Swung on and missed strike three, and that does benefit Northwestern. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Northwestern trails by five. We'll be right back on the Ranger Sports Network. And we're back here once again at Meyer Stadium in Glass Family Field in Elva, Oklahoma. This is Fred Albashan bringing you Ranger baseball. Coming to the plate here in the bottom of the seventh, third baseman number nine, left-handed hitting Brandon Holdren. Holdren officially 0 for 2 on the day. He has walked, struck out, and grounded into a double play. And the first pitch here is ball one from relief pitcher Cohen Bell. Bell came in on relief back in the sixth inning. 
and did a masterful, masterful job of getting out of a bases loaded situation. Rangers came across with zero that inning, and this ball hit up the middle, moving to his left. Is Groff throw to first, and it'll be out number one. So good defense there by Groff as he pick up the grounder that looked like it had a chance to make it into center, but did not. It's going to be a six to three for out number one. Coming to the plate now is the All-American, Blake Hoffman. Hoffman had an RBI on a fielder's choice back in the fifth inning. He's officially grounded out and struck out, making him 0 for 3 on the day. Cohen Bell, the lefty-lefty matchup here, works from the middle of the rubber, and he'll throw strike one, very, very low strike against the 6'3", Hoffman. Hoffman just been a little bit off balance today. Hasn't had his typical day as he he is second on the team, hitting 343 on the season. Still looking for his first hit. This ball's hit slowly to first base, scooped up by C.D. White. That'll be unassisted for out number two. And now coming to the plate is going to be the center fielder, Sean Kelly. Kelly doubled and scored a run back in the second, but struck out his last two times at the plate. It's been the bottom half of the order that's been the most productive for the Rangers. Batters 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 have produced six runs today. The top four have produced one. So this is, the at the moment, the heart of the order. As Kelly looks outside of ball one, so if Kelly can get things started even with two outs, there's a high probability of scoring at least a run here in this inning, but we gotta get him on base first. Kelly picking up his season 10th double of the year back in the second inning. He looks at ball too low. Looks like a good pitch, but didn't quite get into the zone. Getting a little bit of movement and throwing down in the Riverhawks bullpen, nothing in the Ranger bullpen. Ball three, so Kelly, if he could draw a walk here, that could get Koenig up to the plate. And again, the bottom half of the order is the one that's been producing all the runs for Northwestern today. So three and all the count, two down, bottom of the seventh. Here's the pitch in there for strike one. Kelly was taking all the way, hoping to draw the walk. On the season, he has 16 walks. And the pitch from Bell. This one's popped up, and it's going to go foul down the first baseline and out of play. Count now full here to Kelly with two down here in the bottom of the seventh. Northeastern, 12 runs on 14 hits, two errors. Northwestern, seven runs on seven hits, but no errors. And here's the pitch. This ball's crushed into left field. It's going to be a hit. And Kelly keeps it alive, picking up his second hit of the game. And for Kelly, that's hit number 54, which is, at this moment, third on the team. That's going to bring up Braden Koenig. Koenig right now, one for three on the day. He singled and scored a run and hit two pretty solid line drive outs to center field. Koenig can get that same kind of hit going into one of the gaps. That could definitely keep this inning alive. Here's the first pitch. That was going to be in there for a strike. Bell working from the stretch position because it has a very over-the-top motion on his pitches. And with his lanky 6'3 height out there, it's imposing as it comes straight down. This ball's ripped into right field, but foul. Good stroke there by Koenig, but now he's got the count 0-2. Koenig, a sophomore lefty out of Fargo, North Dakota, played at Bismarck State College before transferring to Northwestern. Braden having a solid year, solid year hitting north of 300 on the season. Here's the 0-2 pitch. This ball's fought off, possibly playable on the third base side. Nice snag there by Klingensmith right near the Ranger bullpen as he reaches right along the fence line. And 
That'll be out number three. We head to the top of the eighth, Northwestern Trails, 12-7. We'll be right back on the Ranger Sports Network. And welcome back again. Top of the eighth inning here in Elva, Oklahoma. Northwestern trails 12-7 on the mound. Relief pitcher Evan Colon facing off against the leadoff hitter Blake Freeman. And Freeman looks at ball one just outside. Freeman having a perfect day so far. Three for three with the walk. He's also scored three runs. And that's what you want out of your leadoff hitter, a guy who gets on base and scores almost every single time as he looks at ball two. Freeman's also leading the team in batting average, hits, doubles, at least tied for doubles coming into today. He almost gets hit by this pitch. It's way inside and low. Count goes to 3 and 0. 73 hits and 21 walks on the season for Blake Freeman. Freeman out of Wichita, Kansas, played high school ball at Bishop Carroll. And here's the pitch. This ball's just inside and low, ball four, and he still is perfect on the day, going five for five and on base for the day. So that'll bring up number two hitter, Blaze Brothers. Brothers is officially two for four on the day. He struck out and flew out, also singled and hit a two-run homer, that homer coming back in the fifth inning. Pitch to Brothers way high and inside. That was actually a little bit above the helmet. And that'll be ball one. So one and know the count. One on nobody down here. Top of the eighth inning. Big home run threat team. That'll be strike one. That just catches the outside part of the plate. The two, three, and four hitters have all homered in this game so far. And I believe they came in sixth in the country in home runs. Or no, first in the country. That's right. First in the country in home runs. This ball's hit the third, moving to his left. It's Holdren over to second for one. Really to first double play. Hamakawa turning the double play. And nice defense once again by the Rangers as there's now two down here in the top of the eighth. So the five to four, four to three double play here for the Rangers. Makes it two down now here, and that brings up Brock Reller. Reller has been hit by a pitch twice, struck out and hit a three run homer back in the sixth inning. He looks at strike one. Big, strong lefty here. Reller looks like he could be a linebacker for most Division II football teams. 
Here's the pitch. This ball's crushed to first base, scooped up nicely by Hoffman. He'll take the ball unassisted to first, and that'll be all. Nice, quick, odd one, two, three inning, but that's what the Rangers need at this point. They're going to have to get some runs. We have to the bottom of the eighth. Northwestern trails by five. We'll be right back on the Rangers Sports Network. And we are back here once again in Elba, Oklahoma. Bottom of the eighth inning, Northwestern needs to score a few runs. Hayden Priest coming to the plate. Hayden has had a perfect day at the plate. He's two for two with a walk, single, scored a run, and then hit a three-run homer back in the second. And here's the pitch hit into right center. That'll be a base hit. He remains perfect. Hayden Priest having a heck of a day here against Northeastern. He is now three for three and Four for four with on base. And that'll bring up Joseph Frisbee, the lefty, facing off against new relief pitcher Dakota Jones. Jones, a 6'1 senior right-hander out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Started his career at Connors State. Dakota comes in. This is his ninth appearance. He's 1-1 one one on the season with a 13.06. ERA and the first pitch here high but swinging his frisbee for strike one for Dakota he's pitched 10 in one third innings given up 15 earned runs six walks and has six strikeouts he works from the extreme first base side of the rubber and this ball is shot to second base one hop to brothers over to second for one really to first double play and that's big defense there for Northeastern and not what the Rangers needed. So with two down now, that'll bring up the shortstop, Brian Guerrero. Very unfortunate for Northwestern in that situation. That ball gets up the gap and uh, into the gap, and that's definitely going to help us out in this inning. But now nobody on two down here in the bottom of the eighth. And Northwestern down to four outs. 
and needing at least five runs. This ball is high and away for ball one to Guerrero. Guerrero so far one for two. He struck out, singled, had an RBI single actually, scored a run and walked as well. And here's the pitch. And that's in there for a strike. Count goes to one and one. Unlike most pitchers in the coming out of the bullpen, Dakota Jones actually goes to the windup as a relief pitcher when nobody's on base. And here's the pitch in there for a strike, and Guerrero is looking at strike two. He's going to step out of the box for one second and just kind of regroup. I didn't realize it until this moment, but Guerrero is a switch hitter. Up there batting lefty now against the right-handed pitcher. And that ball is way inside, almost catches him in the shin. Count goes to two and two. Guerrero, a sophomore out of Lawrence, Mass Massachusetts, played at Ranger Junior College down in Texas. This ball is slapped on the third base line, hard but foul. And that's going to roll into the field of play. And we do have a pitcher warming up in the bullpen for Northeastern as well as for Northwestern. Now two and two count with two down. Here's the pitch outside for ball three. And it looks like Brooks Bishop might be warming down, warming up down in the Ranger bullpen. Here's the pitch. This ball slapped into left field. Going deep, going back. Left fielder makes the catch at the wall as Freeman. And that ball, he had given it a ride. If he could have got about 10 more feet out of it, that would have been an extra base hit. But Freeman catches it on the warning track for out number three. We head to the top. Okay, we are back here once again in Northwestern Oklahoma State hosting the visiting non-conference opponent Northeastern State, the Riverhawks, coming over with a ranking of number three in the nation. They have a 12-7 lead here in the top of the ninth inning on in relief. The number three pitcher for the Ranger, Brooks Bishop. Bishop, a six-foot-four freshman out of McKinney, Texas, played at Boyd High School, making his third appearance on the season and he throws this one about 57 feet and it bounces up over the plate for ball one. A little amped up for his first pitch there. This is only a, just into his second inning of work on the season. He has a 4.5 ERA 
giving up one earned run, one walk, and one strikeout. And this ball is crushed into center field just off the diving glove of Hugo Hamakawa. Hugo making a great effort on that one, but that's going to be a leadoff single here for C.D. White. White now officially three for five on the day. He had a couple of singles and also a solo home run back in the third inning to go with a strikeout and a flyout. Coming up now is going to be the lefty catcher, Braden Rodden. Rodden one for four on the day with a double and scored a run. He also struck out back in the third. Working from the stretch is going to be Bishop, the 6'4 freshman, very lanky, strong-looking, imposing pitcher as he throws ball one just inside to Rodden. There's a pitcher warming up in the bullpen for the Riverhawks as well. So we may see the fourth pitcher of the game for Northeastern in the bottom of the ninth. This pitch in there for a strike, just a straight fastball there by the freshman. Northeastern with 12 runs on 15 hits. They have two errors. Northwestern, seven runs on nine hits. They have no, no errors. Northwestern, seven runs have come in just two innings, the second inning and the fifth. And the one-on-one -on -one count, here's the pitch. This ball is hit high into center field. Going back is Kelly. He's looking up. It's gone. And Rodden picks up the fourth home run of the game for Northeastern. And the freshman is greeted very rudely with Rodden's two-run bomb. And that will extend the lead for Northeastern to... 14 to 7. Scoring on the home run also is C.D. White. So officially, the number two, three, four, and five hitters have all hit home runs here for the NCAA leading home run team in the form of Northeastern. Coming to the plate now, center fielder lefty Matt Kaiser. Kaiser check swing in there for strike one. Kaiser so far two for four with a couple of singles and a couple of strikeouts. Appreciate Chris Maple, our old sports information director, reaching out. Thank you for listening in to the Ranger Sports Network. Appreciate the kind comments as well. As we see ball one there low. Count goes to one and one on Kaiser. On deck here for the Riverhawks is the DH Tucker Dunlap, and that ball way outside for ball two. And the freshman Bishop getting a chance to get some get some work in here for Northwestern in a non-conference matchup. He works from the windup position now, and here's the pitch. Check swing again. Oh, I thought that looked good from here. That will go to ball three, and now <laughs> Brooks has got to go pick his hat up as the wind is really gusting. And th then he drops the ball, so... <laughs> Just a little bit of nerves out there for the young freshman, and that's okay. That's how we, you got to get experience, and that's what happens in these situations. Count goes to three and one. Here the ball is a fastball down the heart of the plate and fouled off straight back here by Kaiser. So count now full. Again, Kaiser two for four on the day. Lefty-righty matchup. And the pitch by Brooks is check swing, and that'll go down as a walk. I thought he was going to ring him up. The umpire had that look about him, but he did not. That'll be ball four. And the third consecutive Riverhawk has reached first base. And with nobody down, that's going to bring up the DH, Tucker Dunlap. And we have time called, and Coach Bowen's going to go down and try to calm his freshman down just a little bit. We'll be right back in just a few moments on the Ranger Sports Network.
And we are back here once again. Coach Bowen, the uh, coach of the year in the GAC and in the Oklahoma Coaches Association 2021, having a good conversation with his freshman pitcher, Brooks Bishop. So one on, and there goes the runner. That's just rude. I, I don't think you steal in that situation when you got a seven-run lead in the ninth inning on the road. But it looked like the pitch actually hit Tucker Dunlap. And he did not attempt to move out of the way on the hit-by-pitch, but that's going to go down as a hit-by-pitch anyways. Yeah, I just can't believe you'd actually steal in a, a seven-run lead in the ninth inning. I think that's just a little bit classless there by the visiting Northeastern team. But anyways, coming to the plate now is going to be Colin Klingensmith. Klingensmith so far one for two on the day with a couple of walks and a single. He's also scored a couple of runs. And here's the pitch in there for strike one. So an opportunity here for Bishop to show what he's made of in a situation like this. It, don't look at the scoreboard. As a, in this situation, you don't look at the scoreboard. You look at the situation. You have two men on, nobody out. You, want, you need to record an out for your team. Try to get a ground out. And Bishop wants to have a conversation with his catcher. This will get on as another mound visit. And we have a Ranger warming up in the bullpen. It's Kenichiro Yamakashi out of Koppel, Texas. So count 0-1 on Klingensmith. Men at first and second. Working from the first base side of the rubber. Bishop sets, he deals. Tries a breaking ball a little high. Count will go to 1-1. One and one. And Bishop takes a long look over there at second base, keeping, making sure Kaiser's not going to try to steal third. Checks again. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Colin tried to hold up, but he couldn't stop the momentum of the bat that time. Count goes to one and two. And if Bishop could get himself a, a strikeout in this situation, I think that would go a long way for his confidence and tough game situations. Getting close to 6 o'clock here in Elva Central Time. There go the runners. Swing on a miss. Throw down to second base. Actually throw down to center field practically as nobody was covering second. Nice stop there by Guerrero. And the runners stealing again with a seven run lead. I already said my piece about that but to me, the exciting part is the strikeout by Klingensmith. And there's now one down with runners now at second and third. And coming to the plate now is going to be Cademan Groff. Groff had a two RBI double back in the second inning, but has since gone 0 for 3. He's 1 for 4 on the day. Here's the pitch. That ball is in the dirt. Nice stop there by Hayden Priest. And working from the stretch position still is Brooks Bishop, the third pitcher here for the Rangers. This ball close, but just a little bit high for ball one, or ball two, excuse me, 2-0 now the count, one down here in the top of the ninth. Two runs have already scored thanks to the home run by Rodden. Men on second and third, and the pitch. This ball is hit high into left field. Going back is Frisbee. He looks up. Gone! And a three-run homer for Cademan Groff. And that'll make this a 10-run lead once Groff crosses the plate. Kaiser Dunlap also crossing the plate. And the home runs continue here for the NCAA leader in home runs. The score is now 17 to 7, and that's going to be all for Brooks Bishop. We'll be back in just a few moments with a new pitcher coming in for the Rangers. We'll be right back on the Rangers Sports Network.
And we are back here once again, still here in the top of the ninth inning. Five runs across here for Northeastern. And now on the mound for the Rangers, Kanichiro Yamakashi. And he'll throw strike one to Blake Freeman taking on the first pitch. Freeman is three for four on the day. Three singles, a walk. Excuse me, he's three for three. Three singles and two walks as he looks at ball one. Count goes to one and one. So Freeman, a perfect on-base percentage, five for five today. Already the team leader in a couple categories. And this ball is crushed to deep right. And that ball is gone. The leadoff hitter here for Northeastern with a solo bomb to right field. That ball going about 370 feet over the right field fence and scoring his fourth run of the game is Blake Freeman. So Northeastern just having a blast at the expense of Northwestern. And I don't think we're going to be giving them free pizza after the game or anything special. Maybe they might get some of the ice cream here, but uh, I don't expect they're going to be getting a lot of love from Northwestern after this game. And that'll bring up Blaze Brothers. And this pitch far outside here for Yamakashi. Yamakashi, the fourth pitcher used here by the Rangers, comes in from Koppel, Texas. He's a freshman. He works in the stretch position, third base side of the rubber. That ball's fouled off straight back. The count goes to one and one. Brothers on the day is two for five. He's had a single and a two-run homer. Flew out to left field, struck out, and also hit into a double play back in the eighth inning. This ball is not quite making it to the plate, just a little bit low. Count goes to two and one. One down here in the top of the ninth, and so far six runs have scored the single largest inning for either team today as Northeastern on top, 18-7. to seven. This ball way outside. This one bounces over Hayden Priest, and right now the Ranger pitchers are having a very difficult time. On the season, this is the third appearance for Yamakashi. He has only completed one-third of an inning, given up two earned runs, now three officially, as this ball is inside for ball four. So Brothers on base for the third time today. Draws a walk. And that'll bring up the right fielder, Brock Reller. Reller so far has been hit by a pitch twice, had a home run, struck out, and grounded out to first base. He's also scored a couple of runs and has a total of three RBIs. This ball bounces in, and another stolen base attempt, and that's going to be in there easily. So I can't believe that Northeastern would continue to steal bases in these situations. Especially when you have a freshman that's just trying to help get through an inning. So a 1-0 count. Here's the pitch. This ball inside low, ball two. And right now it's uh, just a difficult time for Yamakashi just to reach the plate. He's Everything has been just short of the plate. He's going to have to put a little more effort on those tosses as we have more Rangers warming up the bullpen. Big swing and a foul ball there, fouled straight back here by Reller. Count goes to one and two and one with one down here in the top of the ninth. On deck is the first baseman, C.D. White. Runner at second. This ball, again, short of the plate. Count goes to three and one. And the Rangers in need of just getting out of this inning right now. And once they do, they have a lot of runs to try to make up in the bottom of the ninth. This ball doesn't make it over the plate either. That ball is short and ball four, so back-to-back -back walks. And that'll bring up number 16, C.D. White. White so far, three for five on the day. A couple of singles and a home run. 
has a couple of RBIs and scored a couple of runs as well. And with a hitter like this at the plate, if you throw anything across, he's probably going to hit it pretty deep. Here's the pitch, way outside, ball one. I still have yet to see anything get up in the strike zone against these hitters from relief pitcher Yamakashi. This ball is in there for a strike. Well done. And it looks like you have uh, maybe Matt Nolan out warming up for the Rangers. Appreciate Cade keeping an eye on things for me. So here's the count one and one. Here's the pitch. This ball is crushed into left field. Should be playable. Frisbee coming over. He'll make the play. And that was a good shot, but he did not get all of it. And that'll be out number two. And that'll bring up the catcher, Braden Rodden. Rodden was 0 for 3 going into the seventh inning, and then he had a double in the seventh and a two-run homer in the ninth. He is now two for five on the day. So a two down and two on. Yamakashi records his first or his second out in his career as a pitcher, and he just misses outside for ball one. Be nice to see him get out of this inning without giving up any more runs and, and start to improve on that young pitching arm. This ball in there for a strike. Big change up. Count goes to one and one. On deck for Northeastern is center fielder Matt Kaiser. It's a good lefty righty matchup that favors Northeastern just a bit here. Yamakashi steps off the mound to rethink his. Approach here. Works from the third base side of the rubber. Here's the pitch. This ball swung on and missed. Another changeup. Out in front is Rodden. And the count now goes to one and two on Braden Rodden. Rodden, a 5'7 junior out of Octa Octaka. I can't even pronounce that. I'm sorry. We'll just say he's out of OK, OK, Oklahoma. I'm way off in the pronunciation. Octa. Breaking ball in there for strike three looking, and he goes down. And that'll be all. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Northwestern needs a bunch. We'll be right back on the Rangers Sports Network.
And welcome back here to Elva, Oklahoma. This is Meyer Stadium and Glass Family Field. Coming to the plate now for Northwestern, the designated hitter, Brett Erickson. Erickson so far, one for four on the day with a single and an RBI score to run. He also struck out facing off against new relief pitcher, Quinton Romero. The lefty pitcher works from the first base on the rubber. Lively fastball in there for strike one. Romero out of New Iberia, Louisiana, played at Coffeyville Junior College. This is his 12th appearance on the season. He has a 0-0 zero zero record, a 2.84 ERA, working in his 12th inning on the year as he throws ball one. He's given up four earned runs, 10 walks, and six strikeouts. So the fourth pitcher used here by Northeastern, they have a commanding lead here in the ninth. They're up 18 to seven. Northwestern hoping to still put some runs together. All stats matter in baseball. This ball is high for ball two. Again, risk a walk pitcher. He's given up 10 walks to only six strikeouts. Count goes to two and one on Erickson. We have some pinch hitters on deck. Chase Orock is warming up in the bullpen. He looks like he'll be coming in for Hamakawa, batting second in the inning. Pitch to Erickson, this ball's hit, popped up. First base side and foul, and it's gonna drop. Great effort there by the catch and rod in, but the ball, the wind carried at the last second. He dove backwards, but could not make the play. He's lucky he didn't get hit by that truck, that CD white truck that was running at him from first base. That would have been a bad collision right there. So still alive here, Brett Erickson with the count of two and two. Erickson out of Collinsville, Oklahoma. Started off his career up at Barton Community College up in Kansas before coming back down to Oklahoma. Long look in, here's the pitch. This ball slapped into center field, could drop. Diving play by Kaiser. Wow, made the play. Good, good play there by Matt Kaiser diving in from center field. I thought that was easily in there for a single. But it goes down as out number one. So we had a pronunciation on that town. I can't even remember it now. Thank you, Emma. Oktaha. So I was way off. Uh, Oktaha. I was not even okay on that one. A little Oklahoma pun there. Uh, Oktaha, Oklahoma. So I apologize to all those from Oktaha about the pronunciation. Up now is going to be Chase Orock, number 18, pinch hitting here for Yugo. Hamakawa, and he'll look at ball one. So Chase Orock, one of my students actually in class, had to do a presentation today on budget cuts, and uh, I said he should stick to baseball after the presentation. So uh, Chase Orock now pinch hitting here for the Rangers. Here's the pitch in there for a strike. Count goes to one and one on Chase. Chase is out of Concord, North Carolina. The right-handed hitting junior comes in hitting 182 on the season. He's got 10 hits and scored 11 runs. A couple of doubles, a triple, a couple of home runs. He's got the power, just needs the, the at-bats to keep that power going. And here's the pitch to Chase. This ball slapped into deep left field. Going back is Freeman. He looks up, it's off the wall. And again, extra base hits is where Orock lives as he hits a double. And Chase Orock picking up his first hit of the game in a pitch hit situation. And we have another pinch hitter coming up. In place of Brandon Holdren, it's going to be Garrett Crone. Garrett Crone from Edmond, Oklahoma. Celebrated his, we'll just say, I don't know what birthday. It's 22nd birthday. Celebrated his 22nd birth, birthday just yesterday. So Garrett Crone looking to keep the, oh my gosh. Emma's showing me her pictures from Oktaha now. Garrett Crone getting his third at bat on the season, looking for his first hit. This was a slow dribble at a short. Late break as Ulrock to third. He will advance to third as Ulrock is out at first base. So Groff easily picking that one up, even though it was a little bit of a slow roller. And that'll be out number two. And that'll bring up another pinch hitter. Coming to the plate, Dylan Norson. Norson out of Loveland, Colorado. 
lot of playing time last year as a junior. Hasn't seen the field as much this year. Norson, for him, this is his 80th at bat. He's got 16 hits, hitting 203. Again, hasn't played as much this year as he did last year. And he'll look at strike one, a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Rangers down to their last out, man at third. They trail by 11. And Dylan Norson at the plate. On relief, pitcher Quinton Romero in for Northeastern. And here's the pitch. That ball way inside, hits the batter. And Norson will be going to first. So Norson was pinch hitting for Blake Hoffman. That'll put runners at the corners. And coming to the plate now is going to be number 19. Sean, I was expecting another pinch hitter. Number 19, Sean Kelly coming back to the plate. He's officially two for four as a single and a double, a couple of strikeouts. He's also scored a run. I would just love the Rangers just to keep things going. It can just be little dribblers. It can be seeing eye singles, whatever it takes. And he was, yeah, he wasn't going for the seeing eye single on that one. Big cut and a miss for strike one for Sean Kelly. Kelly, a junior out of Arlington, Texas. Looking to pick up hopefully his third hit right here. And here's the pitch. Good looking curveball there, but does not catch the plate. The count goes to one and one. 6-10 Central Time here in Elva, Oklahoma. Game time now three hours and about 12 minutes overall. Non-conference game between uh, number three in the nation, Northeastern, as he hit a slow shot to shortstop, picked up by the third baseman, Klingensmith. He's going to be safe at first. The ball gets away, and they're not going to send the second runner, so a run does score. I think that should go down as an infield single. Nope, they're throwing up an error right away. That's going to go down as an error. Sean Kelly reaching first on the E5. I don't think he had a chance at making the play, but regardless, that scores Chase Orock, so Orock coming in off the bench, double scores a run, cuts the lead to 18 to eight, and that's gonna bring up the left-handed hitting right fielder, Braided Koenig. Braided is one for four on the day with a single and three flyouts. Flyouts are not the worst thing, but you gotta hit him just a tad bit further today. The wind will help, and he looks at a breaking ball high for ball one. Norson standing on third. Sean Kelly standing on second. And again, that went up as an error, I guess, to uh, the third baseman or first baseman. It went to one of them. I didn't quite see who it went to. Swung on a miss. Strike one. Count goes to one and one on Koenig. Braden Koenig has 43 hits on the season. Again, he scored a run as well, giving him his 22nd run scored on the year. This ball is hit sharply into center field. It should drop. That's going to get in one, possibly two. We're going to have a play at the plate. What a cannon! And that ball is offline, and that'll be a two-RBI single from Braden Koenig, his second hit of the game. And those, those little punching Judys are working. Let's keep it going. That's three runs scored in the inning. Norson and Kelly both scoring on the single by Braden. And that'll bring up the catcher, Hayden Priest. So with two down, there's still one on. Nobody warming up in the bullpen for Northeastern. So unless he gives up eight runs, I think he's going to stay out there. So Quinton Romero's given up three so far this inning. Here's the pitch in there for a strike. Can't blame Priest for taking the first pitch, but that was a good-looking pitch. Now, he did call it in the second inning. If he sees the exact same pitch, he's going to jack this one. So 0-1 count. Here's the pitch to Priest, and he hits this one into right center. That's going to be in the gap. He picks up another hit. He is perfect on the day. That's going to score a run coming in all the way from first is Koenig. 
And for Hayden Priest, he is now four for four with a walk, as well as having four RBIs. So that's an RBI double for Hayden Priest. And good job, Rangers, as they just continue to score. Picking up their fourth run of the inning, tying their game total for runs in an inning. And that'll bring up Joseph Frisbee. Frisbee is officially one for four on the day with a single. He's also scored a run. Frisbee hits this one into center field deep, coming over as Kaiser makes the play at the warning track, and that'll be all. Well, Northwestern made it a little interesting here in the bottom of the ninth, but overall they end up losing 18 to 11 against the number three team in the country. Um, Northwestern back in action this weekend as they think they're traveling, or we're home, home for Arkansas Tech for a three-game series. And it will be senior day, night, whatever it might end up being, but it'll be a senior event on Saturday. Thank you for listening to the Ranger Sports Network. Once again, Northwestern drops this one in a non-conference game, 18-11. We'll see you Friday on the Ranger Sports Network.